What's happening, folks? Arush here, and today we're talking about ATP, which actually stands for adenosine triphosphate, ATP. Now, ATP is commonly called the energy currency, the energy currency for cells, okay? Um, before we go and talk about this, let's do a recap of what we already know about ATP and then what we're going to cover. So what we already know, we know ATP provides energy for cells. We also know ATP is made in the mitochondria or the powerhouse of the cell. Today what we're going to cover, why is it called the energy currency for all cells? What is the structure of ATP? Where high amounts of energy is stored? How that energy is released? And lastly, how it could be recycled again? Or how can we replenish um, our stores of ATP? Now, I want to show you guys this game. This was a video game, um, an arcade game that I used to play when I was uh, younger. My friends and I used to go to the arcade and we would always play the same game. We would play this X-Men arcade game. Now, in order for this game to work, in order for it to function, we had to have quarters. We had to have currency for this game to play. Similarly, if we want our cells to work, if we want our cells to function, we're not going to give it quarters, we're going to give it ATP. So we're going to give our cells ATP. ATP allows our cells to function just like the quarters allow this game to function. So if I want to go, if I want to have uh, DNA replication to happen, I need to have ATP. If I want to have a muscle contraction, I have to have ATP. If my cells are going to transport a vesicle, I have to have ATP. That's why ATP is called the energy currency because it's it's used by literally all cells. All cells use this form of energy. Now, let's take a look at the structure. We have this molecule called adenine bonded to a ribose, and that makes adenosine. So that's aden adenosine right there. Now, if you notice what ribose is, you should realize that that is a sugar. And now that adenosine is bonded to three phosphates. One, two, and three. And that's where the name comes from, triphosphate. Okay, so we have the adenosine, adenosine, and then triphosphate because there's three different phosphates bonded to there. Now, when we look at these three phosphates, there's actually energy that's being stored in the bonds between each phosphate. Now, the energy that's stored between the second and third phosphate there's a lot of energy. There's a high amount of energy. High energy. And that energy is actually unstable. So this third phosphate actually wants to break off. And when it does break off, there's going to be lots of energy that's released. And our cells are going to use that energy to do their jobs. So here's what this looks like. We have our adenosine and we have our triphosphate. That's where we get ATP from. This third phosphate, remember, there's a high amount of energy that's stored in there. That third phosphate's gonna break off and that energy is gonna be released. Our cells will use that energy that's released. But now we're not left with ATP anymore. Okay, because remember, tri, tri means three. Well, we only have two phosphates attached now. So now we call this molecule ADP, adenosine diphosphate and we're also left with a phosphate group when ATP is used that third phosphate doesn't go anywhere it's still there it's just broken off so um, it's still floating around now what happens let me go and erase um, go and erase this ink real quick what happens when we eat food when we eat glucose and we've talked about glucose uh, is used for fast energy the energy in that glucose is going to get restored between that second and third phosphate. And it's recycled back to ATP. So let's see this one more time. We have ATP. There's a high amount of energy that's stored in between these bonds. To use that energy, that phosphate's broken off. We're left with ADP and a phosphate. When we eat food, that energy is stored back into that bond between the second and third, and it's recycled, okay? And we're back to ATP. 
Now, here's what I want you guys to sketch in your notes real quick. Show me a molecule of ATP and label between the second and third phosphate. This is the second and this is the third phosphate. Label that there's high energy. Okay? Now, I want you to go ahead and give this diagram a sketch. And what this is showing is we have ATP. When that phosphate group breaks off, we're left with ADP, a phosphate, and energy is released. That energy is going to be used by the cells. That ADP and phosphate, when we eat food, they're reattached, energy is stored, and we're back to ATP. Okay? So when we eat energy, that energy is stored back in the ADP and the phosphate. Okay? So let's do a quick recap. We know the structure of ATP. It's an adenosine with three phosphates attached. We know where there's high amounts of energy that's stored. There's a high amount of energy that's stored between the second and third phosphate. So in this bond right here. We know how energy is released. Energy is released when this third phosphate group breaks off. Okay, so when it breaks off and we're left with ADP and a phosphate. And we know how it's recycled. Simply we eat food, we eat glucose, and uh, that energy gets restored back between that second and third phosphate and we're back to ATP. We're back over here. Okay. And uh, that's it for now, folks, and I'll talk to you later.